Okay, I'm recording. Um, yeah, so sort of uh, the gist of the question is um, on sort of bliss and ecstasy and being able to function. And um, now there's a few things. Uh, I'll share my experience and I'll share some of Hawkins' experience. So there, there's a transitioning phase. It's like if you're identified with the ego, then when you let go of the ego and you go off to, into immediate states of bliss and ecstasy, the, it's almost like the oneness or the observer is not yet mature yet. So there's a trans, transiting, there's a clumsy transitory phase where it's quite possible that uh, you know you're you know like ten minutes ago you're identified with the body and the head and the head, and the ego was navigating the world and crossing the roads and and keeping track of all the information, all the dangers and how to walk across the road and doing all that and then you suddenly go off into bliss and it's like there's ecstasy and it's almost like um, it's almost like a feeling of being drunk you know it's just absolute ecstasy and bliss and there's not much identification and there's not much tracking of the world either so it's like well you know it's like you know even if there was a bus going across the road uh, uh, on some aspect it might not be noticed or it might be noticed uh, and also, one isn't the body, so one could theoretically, um, you know, at certain transitory phases where one isn't in the... There's this, and there's also levels of consciousness, and there's also what's called karmic, karmic propensities as well. So it's quite complicated as to actually what is the fate of the physical body. And there's another aspect as well of, of leaving the body, which we'll get to a bit later on, if I remember. So, usually what happens with spiritual seekers when they go from highly identified phase to the spiritual phase, like in bliss or ecstasy, um, my own experience, and I would say Hawkins' experience, so it's quite similar, is that there can be quite, because you're experiencing one level of consciousness, but the body's still there. So it's like, and the body becomes irrelevant, and the world becomes irrelevant to some extent. Um, and it, also, the thing of tracking the world, you know, the ego is no longer there to track the world, like the ego would track, uh, track a bus going across the road. So, now there's another aspect of grace, uh, you know, when, it, when's, when it's meant for the body to leave, and also, but usually, in my experience, and also I saw in Hawkins' experience, there's a phase of almost like a shock. You're living in one level, but the, and not used to the body still being there. So it's like, you know, like I'll, you know, I could like, uh, I'll be blissed out and I'll walk and, I, and my, my foot will hit something in the room because there was no awareness of the body and there was no tracking of what's going on in the room and suddenly, you know, there's pain in the foot, you know, just like, like that or something like that. Also things like um, uh, there could be a loss of memory. You know, like, I've forgotten your name. It could be like that. You've also forgotten what I just said five seconds ago. So there's those kinds of things, and those become irrelevant anyway. But it's possible. I mean, like Hawkins shared this great thing. So, obviously, he was in those uh, infinite states. And because he's not, you're not, your experience is you're not the body. The body's irrelevant. It doesn't exist. So... The intention in spirit is just, you know, you're going to you'd be in this room. Going to, so he decided just he was going to go into that room and, and was going through because he hasn't got a body. And he just walked into the wall and smashed his face. Because <laughs> he's not the body. You know, it's like the body's not here. I just want to be in that room. So just, and, goes, and then suddenly there's this horrific pain, like his whole face is smashed up. You know, so it's like, uh, so that kind of stuff, I, no, I haven't had, luckily I haven't had <laughs> my face smashed up. You know, because you're living in a different realm, and yet the body's still there. But if the body does get smashed up, of course you put, get re-identified with the body, and there'd be excruciating pain. So I, can, I could understand that. There's an aspect of, um, you know, so, uh, and I've done various things like hit my toe and whatever. Because in that infinite state, you're not the body. And uh, it's like there's the intention to be in that room, 
but you haven't got a body and it's not going to walk there but it does walk there but then it's like because you're not usually your ego's there so just it, the foot will just go off into a chair or something and then suddenly there's awareness of the body and the pain so theoretically um, I, I think there's also karma if it's time to leave or not I mean whether whether we'd be blissed out drunk on drunk on bliss and walk in front of a bus then then leave the body so I think there's a but there's also like things of um, now leaving the body you know uh, there's a thing of like well are you going to leave the body and and Hawkins did some um, so when you go off into enlightenment, which is the final burning of the ego, so the ego is like, you know, the ego tends to reinflate and there's re-identification of the body and thoughts on a regular basis, even if you're going to bliss in and out on a regular basis. So then there's the thing of like, what if the final burning of the ego comes in, so it just gets burnt off, you know, the final doorway. And through muscle testing kinesiology, of course, if you're so, if your ego is so burnt off and there's no attachment to the body and to the thoughts, then you could suddenly leave this dimension. You're not going to be here any longer. But, the, but just the spirit undocks, the body just falls over and doesn't breathe anymore. And, uh, and it's got this totally relevant. You know, there's nothing left to identify with it. There's no hooks to anything in this world. So, poof, body's gone. So uh, he did a muscle test on enlightenment. 50% um, of people leave, but they don't redock. They don't. Re the body doesn't carry on walking in the enlightened state. The, the body's released, and and um, that's the end of the body, uh, which is quite understandable because if you go into the observer state, there's not there's not much holding you back into the body or the thoughts or this world. So you can just undock and just leave. Um, uh, so why do some some of them stay? And that would be like. So it's hard to describe, but um, there can be pre-existing karmic contracts to be a teacher, for example. So uh, it's like, uh, so there's a, there's a complexity of whether the destiny on enlightenment is that the body, even though there's no one there, and one is not the body, and is one is not the thoughts any longer, something, you know, you could say nothing is there, but he carries on talking and teaching and walking around the world, you know, and it's, and it's a blessing to those still trapped in the illusion. So, um, so it's like I, when you go from one level of consciousness to another level of consciousness, it's not necessarily always effortless. There can be some clumsiness, and there can be some shocks as well. You know, so uh, it's a bit like um, like if I'm speaking to somebody and I'm out and about with them, I'm trying to help them in the observer. I'm also mindful that you know they're new to the observer, so crossing the road. <laughs> it's like because I know that like, they're blissed off and they're like watching everything and nothing's important. So crossing the road would mean <laughs> they get run over. <laughs> I'm going to leave you now. You just go 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 across the road and go back to the station. <laughs> you know, they just go. Ooh, just walk across here and not notice the bus, and off off they go. So that can ha that could happen, or it could not happen. Also, there can be like it could be there could be like divine intervention for that person. It's like, you know, it's like. They walk across the road and the bus misses them by one second and it's meant to, you know, and they just walk across and it's like every, the whole sea is parted for them. So sometimes that could happen. But also, you know, it, it just depends on various factors. Or they, or they might get run over by a bus, <laughs> which, might be, which is not funny really, is it? <laughs> but but uh, so it, it's, it's, it's like... So on a, on a certain level, um, so th th there's you know there's certain calm even though you're not, even though I mean there can be like a destiny even though there's no body, no one identified with the body, no one identified thoughts. So the body could be walking around, uh, and there's no identification with the thoughts. So an enlightened teacher, for example, like Jesus or or Hawkins or Krishna or Buddha. 
So like Buddha said, it's like when there's no attachments left, there's no more reincarnation, there's no more suffering, there's no more anything. It's the end of the illusion. So, but still the body was there teaching, you know, even though there was no one there. So that could happen or else, you know, the body could just drop down in enlightenment and, and, and there would be nothing left in the illusion to carry on teaching. So, uh, like Hukun said, you know, even though there was enlightenment, there was a pre-existing karmic contract to be a teacher. So, even though there's no one there, teach, the teaching function carries on. So, it's almost like there is a level of divine intelligence, if you like. So, if the world is purgatorial, it's like everyone's in the dualistic illusion of separation, in this kind of dream for transcendence, to escape the uh, illusion, there's a higher order, uh, a higher, um, there's a higher, you know, like Hawkin said, like once humanity had earned enough good karma to be above 200, above integrity, like various things were now, there were certain divine privileges which could be released spiritual information that could be released to the masses, like muscle testing and, uh, and calibra calibrations and discernment of truth. Whereas below, where humanity hadn't earned enough sufficient good karma, even though this is dualistic, you know, it's like, the, you know, like a book being written on levels of consciousness and that wasn't wi widely, um, widely known to the general masses, so that, that's like an eligibility. And you could say there's a divine orchestration whereby, you know, for humanity as a collective, because there can be the awakening of an individual that's identified, but, but there's also an orchestration going on for the awakening of the collective illusion as, uh, 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 that goes on in a higher order. So on a certain level, that's all part of the illusion, well, the, everything in this world is part of the illusion. Mm -hmm. So, but there is a, it's almost like there's a, an infinite grace uh, looking out for the unfolding of the collective illusion that's going on here. But at the moment, you know, mm -hmm. what's happening in the collective illusion is, is where the collective illusion is, you know, with, with all uh, what's going on within it. So that's... Um, yeah, I think that answered the question.